Conquest of the Apes? More like Night of the Living Pissed Off Apes. Let's talk Conquest of the Apes, a movie that is dark, intense, and goes right for the throat. Come in, you're calling Raven. Pay back time. Come on! Come with me if you want to live. You just don't turn it off! In a futuristic world that embraced ape slavery, Caesar, the son of the late Cornelius and Zira surfaces after almost 20 years of hiding and prepares for a slave revolt against humanity. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Jason. Welcome to Backtrack Cinema. This is where we talk movies of the past that you know and love, and we're pushing along with these apes reviews, doing Conquest of Planet of the Apes this time. We're on the road, the kingdom of the apes, and we're getting closer to May 10th, and I can't wait, man. Now, Conquest... Of the apes now this is out of all the 70s the of all the original planet of the apes movies including the original movie this is the one i find myself returning to the most this is my kind of atmosphere my kind of tone dark you know great dialogue just a lot of things going for this movie that i absolutely love and of course we're going to talk about it we're going to get right into this movie because this is one i'll say right now that i highly recommend you all watch and it feels like that 70s gritty kind of movie that you get from injustice and stuff like that like the death wish movies the dirty hairy movies conquest of the apes almost fits into this mold you know what i mean conquest of the planet of the apes was released in 1972 directed by j lee thompson and starring roddy mcdowell don murray ricardo montalaban and harry rhodes so i love where they take things in this movie this is basically the revolt against humanity the apes rising it's essentially you you look at the modern trilogy rise of the apes they took the, the stuff in here and kind of molded their own story to it and it was this fun going back and seeing how in this the 70s version how the the, the apes rose you know what i mean and with this character of Caesar, which is Cornelius and Zira's son, this is 20 years later. So Armando has been taking care of him in the circus. I do like some beats of the story. Some of it, I'm, I'm just like, oh, you could have executed that better. But we find that all the cats and dogs, all the humans' pets have been killed off by this strange disease. And this is a story that's in the future. It's in the early 90s. So... You know, it goes like 20 years into the future, which is kind of funny talking about this movie because the 90s was what, like years, like 25 years ago. Right. So something like that. But there's this gap missing for humans that have these pets. So they use chimpanzees, they use monkeys, they use apes as their, their pets. And then they realize that they're very easy to train and they start using them to clean their houses, pour them drinks, do their housework. You know, just using them as slave and just themes of slavery, injustice, what we're doing to these these creatures. You know what I mean? These smart, intelligent creatures. I think it's kind of far fetched that we would start using apes as our pets. I mean, half of us out there, if we we were staring down an ape, we'd probably be terrified. I think that that's a little far fetched that we'd want to replace our dogs and cats with apes. Whatever have you, we gotta get the story going somehow. Armando and Caesar show up in the city to pass out circus flyers for the circus. That's what I, that's the biggest problem I have with the beat of the story is that why would you risk Caesar being caught? Like he has to fake like he's this, you know, an unintelligent ape and all this. So he won't get caught because they, they'll know who he is. Right. And because uh, authorities are st like still looking for him because they didn't buy that Zira's baby died. And why would you risk that? That's that's the biggest hole in this plot line I, for me is that why would you risk uh, bringing Caesar all the way this just to pass out circus flyers? I feel like that's the only reason they are there. And the inciting incident that gets us going is that Caesar sees how all these apes are being treated poorly and all that kind of stuff. And he kind of yells at one of them within within the crowd and they said, who said that? And then Armando's trying to cover for him. And then he gets taken. And and that's how what propels the story and sends Caesar on his path. Lousy human bastards! So some of it's okay. Others, huge plot holes for me. But not enough to ruin my engagement for this story and uh, the entertainment value of this story. Now, Roddy McDowell as Caesar, I think, is just terrific in this. I think this is his best performance 
um, in the Planet of the Apes franchise. And it's kind of cool that he's Cornelius and he also got to play Caesar, his son. And then, you know, the makeup, they make him look a little different. You know what I mean? Then he continues this character with Battle for the Apes. But there's a scene where Armando dies and then you see Roddy McDowell go off by himself, the tears coming down. And that's where he just tears go into anger and he does it with no dialogue. It is such a moving, gripping performance. And there's the big speech at the end of the revolt or this freaking fire in the background. He's, he's giving away this speech about, you know, we are going to rise my people, the apes. And, you know, today you see the, the rise of the planet of the apes. And originally it was so dark that the studio is like, no, we got to have some positivity in there. That's it. This is just an, a, a dark, dark ending right in that smoke from this day forward my people will plot and plan for the inevitable day of man's downfall and that day is upon you now and so roddy mcdowell came in after and and said a few more lines and then that's why you see close-ups of his eyes when he's talking this is where it kind of foreshadows you know apes and humans trying to live together the ones that want to coexist and want to make it work the themes of injustice racial injustice the themes of animal cruelty what you see them do to these apes by some of these you know political leaders the whole movie takes place in this city where it's kind of like a detention center where they train to be slaves for humans and what you see the apes go through if they um if they fight back they get electric shock treatment which you know goes into one of the cool scenes of the movies where they're doing that to caesar they're giving him the shock treatment and then a human helps him turns off the machine but he fakes it like he is being shocked and that's how he, he escapes and everything like that and I, yeah i just love that the way caesar starts this revolution a lot of it is forced a lot there's a lot crammed into a short period of time i find but you know again it doesn't wreck the enjoyment and everything you see all the apes collecting machetes and knives and you're like this is getting fucking dark man like they're they're ready to freaking go hunt down the humans this is like starts going into horror territory and there is another cut of this movie they cut a lot back where you see freaking there's a lot more blood there's a lot more gore um but just the imagery of you know the whole city burning and the apes rising and it, it's it is pretty fantastic, man. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought George Romero directed this. It has this real Night of the Dead zombie kind of feel to the end of this movie, to the third act of this film. And just the character development of Caesar. You know, I touched on his acting, his performance already by Roddy McDowell, but the development, because at first he's this really timid, shy ape who just can't be alone, doesn't want Armando to leave him. And he goes, no, Armando, let's just go home. Let's just go. He's like pleading and pleading. And then he rises into this strong, you know, like a king, like Caesar. You know what I mean? He just becomes huge and legendary. So great, great little character arc there. And the way he befriends all the apes and everything, the way he, you know, gains all their trust. You see him looking at them. He's staring at them, getting them to do things without talking, just, just with his eyes and stuff like that. Um and starts this revolution. I do like how you get this balance of good human characters and bad human characters. There's the evil characters who want to see the apes just wiped out, want to use them for slaves, all this kind of stuff. But then there's some nice human characters, one in particular human character who who helps Caesar. And, you know, I just like that they do that, that they have always that balance of good human characters and bad human characters. These movies, I find, are really signs of of the time they're made in like this is 72 so racial injustice civil rights all that kind of stuff that goes along with the social commentary of planet of the apes you can kind of see through this movie it's a dark addition to this franchise and like i was talking about the third act this is where all the action is and it doesn't shy away from the action and how intense it could get like you start watching these planet of the apes films when you're going through the original to beneath and to escape than to this it's just like man i didn't realize they were such they got to such dark territory in these original movies it just has all the things i like in a film like this and the fact they shoot the whole thing at night in the third act just adds to the atmosphere of what's going on and everything too so guys if you want a dark twisted intense ride for a planet of the eights film 
then look no further than Conquest of the Apes. I'm going to give Conquest of the Planet of the Apes a solid B. So if you like Conquest of the Apes, then let's have a great discussion about it in the comments below. And if you don't like it, let's have a great discussion. Let's just talk this movie and talk about movies and talk about this great franchise. And if you haven't already liked this content, please subscribe, like the videos, all that kind of stuff. Stay for the end card. So I put other Planet of the Apes reviews for you that I've done already as we continue our road to Kingdom of the Apes. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I will see you next time and I will see you in the movies. Cheers.